variable sweep or swing wing technology first appeared in Britain as far back as 1931 on a Westland tailless swept wing aircraft, though only conceived for adjusting longitudinal trim. The idea was later promoted in Britain by Sir Barnes Wallace after World War II as a solution to another problem, how a high-speed aircraft with swept back wings could also develop sufficient lift at low speed for safe landing and takeoff. As is true of a number of innovations in aviation, a German World War II design pioneered the use of variable wing sweep angle on a high-speed aircraft, the Messerschmitt P-1101 jet fighter. Only one prototype was partially built, and its wing angle was only manually adjustable on the ground. Had it flown, one of three settings between 35 and 45 degrees would have been selected before each flight test, so the optimum angle could be found for best performance at a range of speeds. After the aircraft was captured in its factory just before war's end, it was sent to the Bell Aircraft Corporation in New York for study. In 1947, using a modified scale model of its X-1, Bell tested the feasibility of variable sweep wings in a wind tunnel. Tests proved promising, and the company proposed that it produce 24 fighter interceptors for the US Air Force, based on the P-1101, but with in-flight variable sweep capability of between 20 and 60 degrees. Bell developed a complex mechanism to compensate for the change in position of the centers of gravity and pressure as the wing pivoted. The entire wing assembly moved fore and aft on rails inside the fuselage. Later, swing wing aircraft instead used the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics Innovation of positioning their pivot points outside the fuselage. Bell built two X-5s to prove the concept, and they were test flown extensively from Edwards Air Force Base by the USAF and National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics during 1952 to 55. All the scheduled flight tests were completed, generating a useful knowledge base around the effects of different wing sweep angles. Test pilots included notable names such as Joe Walker, Scott Crossfield, and Neil Armstrong, who made its final flight. Unfortunately, the aircraft proved difficult to fly. In particular, recovery from a spin was difficult and sometimes produced the disconcerting phenomenon of aileron reversal. In 1953, one of the X-5s, flying with maximum 60-degree wing sweep, entered a spin from which it did not recover, with a fatal result for its Air Force test pilot, Captain Ray Popson. With the spin problem unresolved, and the Air Force belief that the aircraft was too small to carry the firepower and fuel required of an effective fighter, Bell's proposed fighter interceptors never materialized. By far the largest and heaviest X-planes conceived were the two X-6s, converted from the giant Convair B-36H Peacemaker. However, they were never produced. The B-36, Strategic Air Command's intercontinental bomber, had first flown a year after World War II. In 1951, it was selected as a test platform for a new power plant which would give bombers unlimited range and endurance. The X-6 concept was to be part of the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Program and General Electric was to design its nuclear-powered turbojet unit, designated P-1. Under Project MX-1589, the USAF was to co-sponsor the program with the National Advisory Committee for Aviation and the Atomic Energy Commission, which was to develop the airborne R-1 nuclear reactor. To support the project, a nuclear complex was built at Convair's Fort Worth, Texas plant. First flight was projected to occur in 1957. The water-moderated, air-cooled reactor was designed to replace the combustion sections of a bank of four General Electric J-53 turbojet engines mated to the X-6. In their new nuclear-powered form, the engines, designated X-40, would be mounted beneath the X-6's mid-fuselage. Their fuel was a radioactive core containing 65 kilograms of enriched uranium and 1.6 tons of aluminium, stainless steel and water. The B-36's six piston engines and four J-47 turbojets would be retained to provide a known source of power while the nuclear engines were evaluated. Takeoff and landing would be achieved with the conventional engines while the reactor remained shut down and the four J-53 turbojets were run at idle on kerosene. After climb to altitude, the reactor would gradually be brought up to criticality at which point the X-40s would take over. While the X-6 did not eventuate, a top-secret nuclear test aircraft, NTA, was produced. When the Carswell Air Force Base in Texas was hit by a tornado, many B-36s were destroyed or damaged. 
One of the damaged aircraft was converted into the NTA for testing radiation shielding for the crew. It was designated the NB-36H, or Convair Crusader, a 16-ton megawatt-power nuclear reactor, dubbed the Aircraft Shield Test Reactor, was carried in the bomb bay. The fuselage was modified to accommodate a series of water-filled tanks as the primary radiation shield and the aircraft's forward fuselage featured a new nose section containing a 12-ton lead and rubber-lined crew capsule. A 100mm thick, 2m diameter lead disc at the forward fuselage rear bulkhead and a windshield of 150mm thick glass shielded the crew from the reactor's lethal radiation. The NB-36H made 47 radiation monitoring flights during 1955-57, to 57, the only known American use of an airborne nuclear reactor. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union had a similar program of its own, using a modified Tupolev Tu-95 bear bomber. The massive weight penalty imposed by the reactor, water and shielded crew capsule, and the need to carry an operational effective payload raised the question of the feasibility of the nuclear power option. USAF interest in the idea of nuclear-powered bombers was at its height in 1955 with the establishment of a weapons system development program, WS-125A, based at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Despite huge expenditure, interest wound down by 1958 and an airborne nuclear power plant was never introduced into service. The competing conventionally powered jet bomber program, WS-110A, on the other hand, did produce results. A pair of prototypes of the remarkable but ill-fated North American XB-70 Valkyrie Mach 3 bomber. Had operational nuclear-powered bombers been produced, they would likely have been converted not from the piston-jet hybrid B-36, but from its all-jet development, the YB-60. One of those was actually built and flown in 1952. Like the Boeing B-52, which won the contract for which Convair was vying, the YB-60 was powered by eight J-57 engines and featured swept-back wings. Although a nuclear-powered aircraft never eventuated in the halcyon days of aeronautical development in the post-World War II years, the concept moved into space, although, of course, with rocket rather than jet propulsion. Nuclear thermal rocket engine tests were conducted in the late 1960s under NASA's Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application and Rover Projects. NASA and the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, are now collaborating to demonstrate a viable nuclear reaction engine. The program, dubbed Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, DRACO, is an enabling capability for future NASA crewed missions to Mars. The plan is to develop and demonstrate the technology as soon as 2027 in preparation for crewed missions to Mars. The rocket would reduce travel time and therefore supply requirements as well as risk to astronauts. In a nuclear thermal rocket engine, a fission reactor is used to generate extremely high temperatures. The engine transfers the heat to a liquid propellant, which expands to a gaseous state and is exhausted through a nozzle to propel the spacecraft. The rocket can be three or more times more efficient than conventional chemical propulsion. We've certainly come a long way from the Westland Taylor swept-wing aircraft of 1931, the acceleration of aircraft design and capability through the 20th century, and now into the 21st century has been remarkable, and it's exciting to imagine where we will be in just a few short years from now as we reach for Mars and beyond.